Well, here we go. Hi, everybody. All one of you or two of you. Well, my deals always seem to start out this way. Uh, <laughs> but uh, it builds up. It builds up. Uh, I personally can't think of anything quite as exciting as sitting there watching somebody turn screws and uh, solder wires. But uh, uh, we all got to learn somehow. And I, I figure as long as I'm learning, may as well share the journey. So who we got here? I see four people here. Make yourself known. I also sent uh, some invites to actually join me in the chat. Keep me company. Wiz, how you doing? Wiz bang. Did you get a, do I have you on my, on my email list that I send you an invitation to come into this, uh, this little panel, this thing has the potential. If I really push through to try to finish it completely, it could go a long time. I, that, uh, marmot build that I did, uh, online ended up being in, in four parts, but, uh, I've learned a lot since then and I'm, I'm a lot faster. So, uh, We'll, we'll see what happens. Let's see, which way do I got to move to get into the middle here? There you go. Ah, so what do we got? We got three people, it says. Uh, and don't know on the road. Oh, okay, okay. Thanks for coming in. I'm glad you, uh, I'm glad you came in to listen anyway. So what, uh, what we're doing here today is... Uh, Gonna go ahead and build this uh, Eosheen Tyro 99, which is, uh, excuse me, Tyro 129. I got Tyro 99 on my brain here. And uh, what this is, is a uh, seven inch quad that's billed as a. Um, long range, long range quad, and it's a complete kit. And it comes with uh, virtually everything. Uh, the frame, the controllers, uh, ESC, 401 ESC, video transmitter, uh, even comes with the uh, 3D printed GoPro uh, Hero camera mount. It comes with a GPS module. Uh, it, it, it's all, uh, supposedly the beta flight is all pretty much set up for it, including the GPS module. The only thing that they really don't address, and I did watch one other review on this quad. And the only thing that they really didn't address was, um, how to mount the GPS antenna, because it is tricky. Uh, you got to get those things up high on the quad and, uh, if you don't get them right, they might get some interference from some of the other components, or they might not see the sky correctly. A ah, little water there. But um, it's really an amazing, uh, an amazing, amazing, amazing kit. And it, uh, I'll show you the... Uh, the Banggood site here. Let me uh, get over to that. And there it is. And it's, uh, it comes with the, uh, with the, uh, with some name brand props and uh, really something for $129. And then of course, there's always coupons with Banggood that uh, I know I got mine for 10% off. So I paid less than 120 bucks and that included the shipping, but I opted for, uh, the, uh, shipping with, uh, what they call USA priority mail. And they, it was an extra two bucks. And, uh, what that does is it, uh, ends up in FedEx's hand. Uh, I had actually ordered two of them. One of them, I, I went big bucks. I went for the $10 shipping, which is called expedited shipping. And and that's the one I got. And, and uh, there, there was no tracking or anything uh, on it until um, you saw, uh, until it hit the States and then it hit uh, UPS. And from there, it was two day air. So I actually got it in about 10 days from China. 
The second one that I ordered by the uh, cheaper shipping is in FedEx hand, hands now, uh, but uh, and it's going to be here on Wednesday. And the reason I bought two of them was I figured, you know, for that kind of money, they're almost like throwaways. And uh, the components in the thing, the controller and the GPS module, the camera, which is a CADEX camera, all that stuff, if you add them up and you try to buy them individually, it's going to cost you a couple hundred bucks. So I figured that maybe if nothing else, it'd be good for either spare parts or parts to put in another build. And if I like the thing and I like the way it flies real, a real lot of, I'll, I'll just go ahead and, and build, build up, build up the second one. Thomas, Thomas, how you doing? Thanks for stopping by. Uh, glad you stopped in. I know it's a Sunday and I know people are, are busy doing things on Sunday and uh, I appreciate you, you coming in. I try to do these things when there's not a lot of other live stream and activity going on because I know that, uh, uh, you know, this is just going to be a long thing. And I don't expect anybody to sit here with me for, for three or four hours. Uh, some people like to, but uh, tune in and out, see how I'm doing. Um, at any rate, let's, uh, let's see if there's any other bookkeeping to do here. Uh, I, I did send some links. If there's anybody that wants to, uh, to come in and Keep me company on 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 the panel. I'll have you in one in in the, the way this layout works is I'll have you uh, over on the side. Let's see if I can. Uh, I won't do it because I don't have anybody else in there yet. But I'll have you over on the side there. My screen will be bigger. You guys will be stacked up on the side. And uh, one of the things that would be nice is uh, help me out with uh, keeping an eye on the chat because when I'm working over there at the build table, it uh, it it it's kind of, you know, difficult for me to, to keep an eye on the chat. And I don't, I don't like it, uh, uh, for people to think that, you know, they're in the chat, but they're, but they're not, uh, but they're not, um, being ignored. Indigo Rhino, cheap build kits aren't great parts, but they're intro to building. I say, if I, I agree a hundred percent and interestingly enough, uh, and I built this, the, the Tyro 79 and the Tyro 99. And uh, on the Tyro 79, the motors were terrible and the camera was terrible. Uh, so I replaced them with, with good stuff. And I, I now have great, you know, great quads that still were cheaper than if I had bought, uh, uh, bought them otherwise. The Tyro 99, I just did that build a few days ago and rebuilt it with a new frame. And uh, I took it out and flew it, and it's it's wonderful. It's wonderful. I've got a video almost ready to release on my first little test flight of that thing. Uh, and the parts in in this uh, Tyro 129, you've got a CADEX camera. You've got uh, uh, an Eachine VTX, which are terrific VTXs. I've used a couple of them, um, and it has and it also has uh, smart audio. It's running beta, the new beta flight 4.1, I think. Uh, we'll find out when we plug the controller in. Um, the, the, the controller and the ESE, so they're F4, but the F4 controllers work fine. This, this controller's got five spare UARTs, so you can hook anything up to it. The GPS module that it comes with is exactly the same module that I've been buying for my other quads. Uh, somebody, somebody, uh, <laughs> somebody, uh, uh, just stuck an Eachin label on it. Hi, Brent. How you doing? He says he sees the monkey crew are here. Is that what you guys are being called? The monkey, the monkey crew. <laughs> uh, oh, Thomas, you're buying a uh, a Mavic Two. Which one are you buying? You getting the Pro or you getting the Zoom? They're both good. They're both good quads. Uh, and it's sunny. No rain yet. Man, it's been raining like crazy here. I was hoping to get some flying in, and it just clouded up and started started raining early anyway let me switch over here to the uh to the build table and i'm going to start unboxing this thing and uh, the zoom yeah you'll like that that's a terrific quad it just it just the, the one thing i i have a zoom and the one thing i have to uh keep re remembering on that is that uh when you when you go uh, to start flying around, you know, you got to remember where that zoom thing is because you might think you're a lot closer to something than you really are, especially when you're you're, you're starting to come home uh, for landing if you've been way zoomed in. And if you 
use the digital zoom too. If you're shooting in 1080 and you go to that 96 millimeter zoom, it's like a telescope. So uh, you might think you're close to something and you're a half mile away. So uh, I, I always have, it, you know, get my shot, get what I want, and then just immediately zoom back out all the way. And then I know, I know where the, where the quad is. So let's see here, let's go over to the, uh, to the build table here. And I'm going to wander over. Uh, anybody wants to come in, just uh, let me know. Let me know. Okay, here we are. And uh, I printed these instructions. Um, they didn't come in the box, but I went ahead and printed them. And for all intents and purposes, they're really pretty useless uh, if you know how to build them. But there, there is. It's typical of the uh, of the of the e uh, I, I know this is upside down for you guys, but uh, that's the way my camera is setting. Um, but it tells you goes through all the different specs and and everything. Uh, the uh, it does have a screw a screw chart in here that tells you what screws to use, which is probably which is this right here, and that's probably the one thing that's useful. It shows you the little round colored circles and which size screws to use. So with that being said, I'm going to take these instructions and put them aside. And we're going to do, I'm going to open the box up and see what's in it here. Okay. I think I already have three or four sheets of these that I'm not using. So I have now have one more that, uh, that I'm not going to be using. Um, it is a box full of stuff. So I'm going to move the box over to the side here and start uh, start taking this stuff out and taking a look at it. The first thing that I see here is the, uh, this is a, a 3D printed GoPro Hero mount. And I got to tell you, uh, it's a nice, it, it's done in TPU, so it's flexible. And it's a, it's a quality looking piece of printing. It, does, it doesn't look, it looks like, well, on this side, it has has the edges, but it looks like they 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 printed them uh, in multiple side by side because this side of it here it looks like it's been sliced off as with a razor. It's it's but it, it it's it's nice. So I'm happy with that. Uh, this is the typical. Uh, this is a bottom mount battery. So this thing, I'm I don't know if I'm going to use it or not, but it's a typical carbon fiber battery plate that goes on the bottom and then they give you feet. So it lands on the feet and protects the battery from getting uh, all blown up. So we'll set that up here. Um, I'm not even going to open that yet. They do give you these little carbon fiber wrenches, which I, which I never use. Um, this is kind of nice. This is a, uh, uh, it's got an Eosheen brand on it, but it's a nice looking it really is a nice looking little from from the outside anyway, a nice looking little an, uh, VTX antenna, a little stubby. And I think that uh, that looks probably as good as any. We'll see how that we'll see how the reception works. So you do get that antenna here. You get a, uh, a little pigtail for the uh, to go from the VTX to the antenna uh, Four propellers. And these are. Uh, Dow prop cyclones, which the, for the first for the first time that uh, in one of these Tyro kits, did they actually include a name a name brand prop? And I use the Dow cyclones on my three inch quads, and they're terrific props. They give you one set of them, but the, at least they're not throwaway props like the like the previous Tyros have been. Uh, uh, we check the chat out here. Oh, that's, that's yeah, I don't know, Wiz. It looks like it was sliced. It looks like it might have been, but it's it. Uh, there's absolutely no mark whatsoever on it. It might have been. It might have been. That might have been printed like this. You're probably right. You know more about 3D printing than I do. Then one thing that uh, that Eosheen that always gives you with with their quads and uh, is is this little assault rifle. I don't know if you can see that or not. And you wonder what the hell is that for? But I come to find out that it's it's designed to go in here and hold the motors from turning while you turn the thing. So it really has a use. I don't particularly use it, but um, 
<laughs> we did figure out what that was for. So I'll put that aside too. Then uh, you got four motors. Now these aren't, these are your typical uh, Eachine motors. They're probably an eight or $9 motor. They, they have plastic wires, which a lot of guys complain about instead of the silicone, but I haven't had a problem with them, but they seem to have good bearings in them. And these are, uh, you know, a little bit bigger than what I've been used to dealing with on the five inches. These are 2507, 1800 kVs. And this quad is supposed to be from three to six S, but I'm, and, and, but I, I tend to fly these things with four S and I think that's the battery size. So we got four motors here. So let's uh, take the four motors out of the, out of the box. And they do give you two clockwise and two counterclockwise motors. Okay, so that takes care of the big round hole in the middle. Now, this, this is the frame and that, of course, is the first thing we're going to build, but I'm, gonna, I'm not going to unwrap that yet. And I'm going to take the props and put them aside because they're not going to need them at least for five or ten minutes. Uh, okay, what else they give you? They give you a battery strap, uh, two battery straps, which is nice. I'll put that aside. They give you some heat shrink to go on the, uh, on the arms to put the uh, motor wires on, which is, which is nice. They give you some tie wraps. They give you all, all of the cabling that you need. And, and the nice thing about this is there's very little soldering on these kits. Most, most of the, uh, the interconnections are all done with cables. In fact, the only thing you have to solder on, on this uh, whole kit is the uh, ESC, the motor wires to the ESC and the, and the uh, uh, RJ, uh, the uh, XT60 uh, connector. And uh, they give you that XT60 connector in, in here too. So we get the wires. We have uh, some TPU, a TPU printed VTX antenna mount and some tubes to hold your, uh, your radio antenna. But I'm going to be using the uh, FreeSky uh, R9 um, MM in this thing, which is uh, 900 megahertz long range. And it has a, T antenna, which will stick out of the back. So, but that's, that's nice for the, uh, for the uh, VTX. And then they give you just a bag full of screws and that takes care of this side hole. Now down in, in here, we have the, uh, and I'm going to zoom in on this so we can take a close look at it here. Give you guys, I'll try to keep it centered up there. This is the ESC, the four and one ESC. And of course the, uh, the motor wires go here. So we have the ESC and then we have the, uh, the F4 flight controller board. You see all the different plugs, although you could, it does have solder pads on the bottom to match every pin in the plugs. So you could, if, if you were, you know, wanted to use this somewhere without plugs, you do have a pad to solder virtually any, any of these things too. And it has an S SD card uh, slot here. So it does black box. It does black box logging too. And this is supposed to have all the, uh, uh, the proper settings and everything firmware on it already to make it easy to, easy to set it up. So we have that. We have This is the GPS module here. I'm going to leave it in the bag for right now, but this is exactly the same uh, GPS module, except that Eachine stuck a sticker on it uh, that, uh, that I've been buying in there about 15, $16 a piece. And they work great. It's got, it does the glow NAS and, and, and everything else. Um, but that, uh, that comes with it too. And of course you, when I buy them, they come with a, with a wire. Uh, they come with, with, with a cable so you can solder it, but the cable for this comes in the, in the package with the cabling, but that's the little GPS module. And they give you the little 3M double sticky to stick it down. Now, what I did was, um, I don't know. I, I, this is, I think it's pretty close, but I 3d printed this TPU, uh, GPS 
module mount and the GPS module slides slides into it. And this one is too big. It's a little bigger, <laughs> so it won't fit. But I'll be able to I'll be able to use this on a on a on a quad someday. And the the the, the GPS the mounting of this is something that uh, is the only thing they really don't they really don't uh, uh, address really fully. So what else we got? We got, ah, whoa, need the long fingers. Wow, there it is. Okay, this is the, uh, this is the video transmitter here. And uh, this is uh, a, a pit mode 25, 200 and 600 milliwatts. Um, and uh, I've used these Eashin VTXs before and they, they, they work pretty, they work pretty good. Uh, at any rate, that, that's a stack mountable as well. And that, that also comes with it. And, and you also get this little, little CADEX, uh, what's the model of it? The CADEX, turbo micro f2 so for the first time in one of these uh tyro kits is actually actually a name brand camera and i think that that is about everything but that that's 129 dollars so i don't know if you guys agree with me but i think uh i think that's a seems like a pretty good deal <laughs> Let me see what's going on in the chat here now. If uh, if I if, see if I missed anything, uh, you can scale it in the slicer program. Yeah, I know. Yeah, drone shot. That's a good idea. I could I could scale it up. Unfortunately, I think that the mounting, I'd have to redesign it. The mounting, uh, uh, if these uh, these mounting holes here. If I scale it up, we'll get further apart. And I think they're already too far apart. So I probably need to, if I want to even use this design, uh, I probably need to load the SDL file into uh, uh, Fusion 360 and finally start learning how to use it or design one from scratch. But uh, it was a thought and, and I wanted to get some more practice printing with, uh, with the TPU stuff, which, you know, rubbery is kind of cool, flexible stuff. Yeah, I'm learning all this stuff. They say when you're when you're old, you can't learn. But somehow I'm somehow I'm getting by. Uh, let's see what else is going on. Thomas is gone. See you later, Thomas. Uh, okay, so we haven't had a lot of activity in chat. Nobody wants to come in here and join me. We got uh, uh, five people watching, so I got an audience. Okay, great. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to take. Um, all of this stuff and I'm going to get rid of the get rid of the box with the big foam cutout temporarily and go back to the to here and I'm going to put all of this stuff except the frame and the screws in this box here into here so let's just the screws, I don't need the antenna yet, don't need that, don't need the wires yet. Might need the uh, heat shrink, don't need the camera, don't need that. Set the motors aside, and I'll put the uh, electronic stuff back over there. Empty bag. Wrenches. All right. So now, let's see what we got here as far as frame parts go. Well, they're not bad. Probably could use a little chamfer in there. Uh, supposed to be five millimeter, and they are. 5.1513 millimeters. So they're pretty sturdy arms and, and thin arms too. So 
uh, I would imagine that if I'm going to use these uh, these heat shrinks, they're going to have to go on first. But boy, it sure doesn't look like they want to. They're going to fit over there. <laughs> Maybe that's not what they're for. No, they're too tight for that. So to give you four heat shrink tubings that are too small for uh, for the arms. So I do have some bigger heat shrink that I had cut for use on that uh, build I did the other day. And uh, I... Uh, I don't remember where did I put those things, but I can. They're big enough that they'll fit over this uh, this outside edge here. So let's uh, let's go out a little bit on this and open this bag of screws and see what we got here. Sir. Ah. Well, Indigo Rhino, I'll tell you what, I've noticed that you're white and everybody else in here is blue. So let me go ahead and give you a blue wrench so you can be like the rest of us. And I'm glad you're hanging around. Okay, so that's camera mount, top plate, and uh, bottom plate. Okay, so let's see what size screws it says that uh, we've got so this is twelve millimeter. So I think these are the 12 millimeter ones here. Yes, they are. All right, so the way they go, and uh, let's just lay this out here and see which way these these should these should go. Do we want to do we want to have them this way or this way? Uh, I think there's three. I think that this should be on the outside to protect the motor, and on and it should also be to the back like that. Uh, so we've got the uh, the carbon coming coming and gone, and uh, this one like that. Okay, so we're gonna go from the bottom. I'll do this one first. Do that one. Now we got to have the. Uh, got to go through the cross plate first. We go through the cross plate, then through the arm, then like that. And a lock nut. Okay, well that fits. And then this one, I'm surprised that they only use two screws in this. That to me it seems a little under-engineered, um, but uh, since I, you know, none of us ever intend to crash these things, do we? <laughs> They do give you some embedded nuts. Oh, I see. I see. They give you these embedded nuts 
evidently to go in this big hole here for underneath this underneath the stack so they probably yeah they go they go in there and the size of that screw is a 14 so I should have some that are even longer than the ones I've been using here yep so these are 14 and they go up into the embedded nut and then they'll go into the bottom they'll go into the bottom of the uh, the plastic let's see this should pull that press that down into the carbon oh, these are terrible these are terrible screws you're right you get what you pay for but what I'm gonna do I think is I think I'm going to uh, maybe do a little yeah these that, that's I had the same problem with some of the screws on the on the other on the other uh, Tyro kit and that was that uh, that they uh, they stripped out pretty easy so let's see if maybe a, a better a better wrench will get them tight so let's uh, am I losing everybody I still got some people I still got a few of you guys here all right, uh, go down here to the tool bag and see if uh, I got a, uh, something that will do a little better job without stripping it out. That's better. And also, get myself a little hex, little metric hex driver there, and That's pretty solid. That's pretty solid. Okay. So that's one of them. Now we need a 14. And another one of those press fitting screws. You guys, can you guys see what I'm doing? Yeah, I think this is a cheap, cheap driver. I'm going to get a better one here. I think this one might be better. No, it still feels, still feels loose. This, this wrench here seems to be a little better fit. Okay, and then uh, it really isn't too much to build in these frames. It is bigger, that's for sure. Let me put that uh, put that seven inch prop on this thing, and it's going to be uh, a pretty good size. Uh, I've seen a couple of guys on YouTube that um, uh, really just uh, say that they're going to five-inch quads. They just like that. They like them better. I'm um, seven-inch quads. I don't. I don't. I, I, we'll see. 
uh, that's the front and back. So this one would go this way. Twelve. And a fourteen. I ah, got that one upside down. Pay attention. Pretty stiff. Not bad. Okay, so we got all these things facing the right way. The carbon is towards the front, towards the back, and the last one will go this way. Right, and I should have, there's the 14 and there's the 12. And it looks like they do give you one extra of these press fit nuts. <laughs> oh, they give you one extra lock washer. All right. Well, spare parts. Okay. So let's tighten this up. And tighten this. Okay. Well, that's that's a frame. That's a start. So, what else we got here? We got uh, plastic. Let's see if there's different sizes of these plastic standoffs here. We got four of them. Eight, I give you 12, 12 of those and a spare and they're all, they're all the same size. So looks like 
if you with all of that this stack might be too tall for this let's see how where are the uh... no they're pretty tall the uh, posts for these things Yeah, they're pretty, you have plenty of, plenty of room in there. It gives you, see that? That's how tall it is in there. So, who else, is, who's still here? Same guys, okay. It's riveting, isn't it? All right, so we'll screw the, uh, we'll put the posts on. And I don't see any shock mounting provisions here for any of these things. You usually have the flight controller shock mounted. Uh, so it may very well be that in a bigger quad, it's not as important. I don't know. But we're going to build it like it comes and fly it without making any modifications to it. And if it looks like it needs... There's a lot of jello introduced from vibration and stuff like that. Then we can always go back and replace these plastic uh, standoffs here. These plastic standoffs can replace them with uh, um, the rubber shock mounted variety. So, so that's, these are the camera mounts and I guess those things will go uh, in, in these holes here, which is kind of like the, uh, Emacs Hawk five mounts. It's just a lot of the frames just do that. And, uh, nothing wrong with that. Now we, uh, we probably time to mount the motors. So, one of these sides is the front. This is the front. And motor one. If I'm not mistaken. The. Let's see if it shows which. Where the different. Uh, I think that the counterclockwise. I think this is the. Now this, I think the clockwise motors go on the uh, front right and rear left, but uh, I don't. I still don't see any reason these things don't. They don't come apart. Oh, that picture doesn't show me anything. Uh, it doesn't show me the the layout. doesn't it doesn't say which which motor goes where so let me take a again take a look at the picture of this thing on the uh, here on on the on the thing and I'm looking here at uh, that's right. See the, uh, the silver nuts. That's a silver nut. That's a black nut. That's a silver nut over, over on the top. So it, it appears that I was right. The, uh, if you're facing the front of the quad, the, um, the silver motor goes here. Okay, so what I want to do, I'm sure it uses these screws here since I got so many of them. I'm going to put, and it only uses three per motor. I'm going to put one in to start. Check the length. Make sure that they don't, doesn't come out the top. That's good. And is that the right hole or the wrong hole? Wrong hole. Okay. The wires go this way. 
So this goes, this goes there. And I do want to lock tight these things in place. I do want to lock tight these things in place. Boy, are you kidding me? These wires. <laughs> Talk about. This is the back of the quad here. So this is the uh, the flight controller. I think. Man. <laughs> that is not a, I mean, that's cut just exactly to the right length for this thing, which is, which is okay. Now, do I want to put, do I want to put the shrink wrap? I think for these long arms, it might be nice. And uh, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I have to try to go find... I know I put that stuff. I got uh, so you guys excuse me. I will be right. I'll be right back. Uh, check the chat out and see if anybody. R D F P V. How you doing? How you doing, my friend? Thanks for stopping by. I hope I'm not boring the hell out of everybody. I'm having a good time, but I will be right back. I I do have a. Uh, a wireless mic on me so i uh, i can wander around all over the place and uh, continue to talk to you guys so i have to be careful what noises that i make uh where did i put i, I had them and i said you know i'm gonna put these things in a place where i can find them that's my first mistake uh, for this build that i'm doing and where would I, in, in all my, ah, that them? There they are. Yes, sir. Okay. The last place I would have looked, but I just noticed them. So, four of these. Bigger, bigger heat shrinks. It should fit over the big end of that thing, but this stuff shrinks down pretty good. And worse comes to worse if it, for some reason, it doesn't, it doesn't shrink down like I want it to. It, uh, I just cut it off. But yeah, there you go. Yeah, I think that'd be nice. Uh, to put it right about where the tip of the prop comes by. So if something happens, it might protect the wires a little better. So we'll throw, we'll throw four of these on. And uh, and then we'll get some. We'll get some Loctite going here and something to put the Loctite on. We just use this, uh, this little bag here. Put a little puddle of Loctite there. And uh, now, you know, I got, I do have two cameras guys here. I have, uh, I have this one too. And is this, is this, do you think this is a better view for you to see what I'm doing? Uh, in, in some respects it might be. Uh, let me know, let me know uh, in, in the chat there if you, if you think that uh, that that build is, uh, uh, that, that view is actually easier to see and easier to keep track of. Um, there, there we go, get, get the, get the whole workbench in there. And uh, 
if uh, if any of you guys uh, want to pop in here in in in, in the uh, and and start a little panel going, help me keep an eye on the chat. I think what I'll do is uh, I'll just go ahead and pop a link in the chat there to the uh, to the Streamlabs uh, to the Streamlabs thing, and uh, if you just click on that in your browser, you might come in. Nothing to be embarrassed about. If I can do this, that everyday dad guy say, if I can figure it out, you can figure it out. Well, if I can do this without being embarrassed, anybody can. So uh, here's your chance, guys. Become a star. Let's see here. All right. So now I think I want to. Do it this way before I start with the sloppy, with the sloppy uh, Loctite. I'll put one screw in to make sure I got it somewhat in place. I don't know if this is a better view or not than this, but uh, I'll switch back and forth. So there we go. And let me get... Uh, get all four of them in with one screw each and that way it'll set up on the motors and make it easier to to screw the loctite to screw to, to less messy to use the loctite and let me move this out of the way so i don't already start. i get that stuff everywhere Okay. So did I get it right? No, of course not. Wait a minute. <laughs> oh, Mitch, I'm going to put the motor. I want to have the motor on the bottom facing down. <laughs> I'm so worried about whether what's the front or the back of this thing is. I wasn't paying attention to the top and the bottom. That's yeah, a good thing I figured that out before I put all four motors on and all those and all the screws with all the Loctite and realized that uh, that I, I built the thing upside down. Oh <laughs> uh, well, that's why I call this beginner FPV because. It's absolutely true. <laughs> All right. So now a black motor has to go here. I don't know if I'm off the page. I think I'll give you guys a little wider view so you can pretty much see what I'm see a little more of what I'm doing here. Because I know that you don't want to miss not a single, a single screw. Okay. And now we will take a, that's good. We will take a motor with a silver nut Put it opposite the other motor with the silver nut. Under the heat, the heat shrink. And uh, let's see, we get this sideway like that. Okay, and the last motor goes opposite the other black motor. Hey, Ed, how you doing, buddy? Love my drones. Good to see you. I haven't had the nerve to use Loctite on a motor screw. <laughs> I'll tell you, Ed, uh, you use the blue Loctite and you can uh, you pop it off. No problem. Don't use the red Loctite because... You may as well just weld it together. But the blue stuff 
is is in fact it even says on the label it says says temporary so uh I use that all the time and I, not that I've been at this all that long, but I haven't had a motor loosen up yet. So not even those little Tyro 79 ones that I replaced that vibrated so much that you couldn't fly to quad. Okay. So now I got four motors on there and let's get back to this and get some more of this Loctite out. Make a nice little puddle of it here. There, oh, that's what I'm looking for. Okay. And line up holes okay Not even close. Well, that uh, the thought. What is it about that hole that doesn't want to line up there for some reason? That's very strange. Let me try. Try this one. Okay. There we go. God, these screws are terrible. That one's just stripped out. I can't even use that one. The other two tightened up okay. That's the only one of the, you know, when you, I, you know, you gotta, you gotta be prepared to know that when you, that they do cut certain corners, uh, in producing something for this price and you have to decide whether it's good enough. Now I, I could actually replace all, I have enough hardware here to kits to replace all this stuff, but I'd rather just use, use what they give me, um, then replace it all. And you can, you can certainly tighten it up tight enough. And if you, uh, use the Loctite, I don't think it's going to be a problem. So that's that one. And uh, one of those screws basically was just really, really wobbly even before I, uh, before I put the thing in the first time. I didn't, I didn't do any harm to it with the, with the nut driver. I, Okay. Okay. 
And I don't put too much of this Loctite on there, just a little bit on the tip and gets down in the, in the threads there and that's all you need. This thing is not billed as any kind of a racing quad or high performance quad, which is one of the things that appealed to me about it is the fact that it, uh, it's more for cruising than uh, racing through gaps and things. And I think that as I continue to learn to fly these things and considering my, my history in RC and my, what I consider my own style at flying, I think cruising is, is uh, more suited to me. Um, although I, I do like to fly things fast and I do like to, uh, to do pretty, pretty aerobatics. Um, the stuff that uh, these guys do in the parking garages is not something that uh, I really have any aspirations to do, nor do I feel like I want to race either. So I think this, this size quad, may actually be a re might, might fit right in with what I think I might enjoy. And, and if I do enjoy this a lot, uh, it, it may just turn out to be that this is the size, uh, quad that I, that I enjoy the most. And I'll start building more of the seven inch ones. Um, there's a, there's a, guy named Pavel something or other who has a YouTube channel. I forget his last name. And one of his videos was entitled, uh, I'm switching completely to seven inch quads. And he made some good points on that too. Uh, of course there's the, there's the beast class now, which, uh, are these monstrous X class racing things that use 12 S and weigh eight pounds and scare the pants off anybody flying them. But uh, I don't think I'm going to go that route either. Although I have flown some, uh, I do have a pretty large helicopter that's uh, an 800 size helicopter that, that does fly on, that does fly on 12 S and uh, uses two 6S 5,000 batteries and it's the one I use to try to carry camera platforms. Um, and that's a scary thing because you cut your head off with that, uh, with those rotors. I mean, it, uh, it is scary. And I think that these X class quads are in that realm. You get hit with one of those things. You're it's going to kill you. There's just no, no, make no bones about it. I, I even, even these five inch and, seven inch quads can probably do a lot of damage, but, uh, the seven inch quads really aren't much heavier. They don't have much more power, if any, uh, than, uh, than the five inch quads. It's just, just a little bigger. And I think it would be a little more stable, more like, uh, the size of a Mavic. Uh, a Mavic has, uh, was it seven inch props, eight inch props. And, uh, if you unfold a Mavic, it's probably about this big. And I, I don't think it's going to weigh less than a Mavic. So that'd be interesting to see. Okay. I got one more motor to do three. There it is right there. Let me check on the chat here a little bit. See how everybody's doing. See who's you still with me? Six people. Ah, EBR. How you doing? How you doing? My friend. Good to see you. Who else came in here while I was busy? <laughs> Yeah, we're building it. Uh, we're, I'm building it stock. I'm building it stock uh, because I want to. Um, I just 
I'm curious. I think I think it's uh, it, it has good enough components that it'll probably be a fun flying thing stock. It's it's not going to be uh, something to really rip like crazy with. I think it's more. I think it's going to be much better suited to uh, cruising around. It it comes. It does come with the uh, with the GoPro uh, with the GoPro session mount, and uh, I think that that's. Uh, We'll see. We'll see. It's an adventure for 129 bucks. Actually, it cost me $115 because I had a 10% coupon. Uh, it, it'd be interesting to see. All right, let me go. Let me go put that last motor on there, and then we can get started on the next step. Let's see. Okay. Did I get locked tight on this one? No. All right, so let's uh, go get a paper towel and get rid of all this excess Loctite here before it just makes a mess of everything. Well, let's see. We've been at this for about an hour. Not too bad. Not too bad. Okay. And we got the uh, got the frame on. Still got plenty of hardware. Right, most of this hardware would be for the there's four posts, but we'll put them on later. Okay, now. It's time to uh, to deal with uh, with the ESC, and I think that that's the side that goes up. I would imagine that the connector is going to be on top. Uh, and let's look at these fabulous directions and see if I get a clue. Well, that's the that's the way they show it when they point out, and M1 is back here and the uh, this is in the front and of course the that mates with this and the arrow is pointing front so that appears that that's the orientation of the flight controller and the uh, and the ESC so Let's fire up the soldering iron. And uh, let's get this thing ready to, to solder. I also need the uh, the pigtail, so I need to get the uh, the pigtail ready as well. And anything new in the chat?
so you got the uh, where, where'd you indigo where did you get the uh, where did you get the GoPro session with the two-year warranty I'm curious let me let me know I'll tell you if you guys are interested um, if you're if you're interested um, I just got I just got this one uh, it's a uh, it's a 165 with a two-year warranty okay you know uh, it, it's it's a, a, a refreshed or refurb one I'm sure because that's what I got did you, you probably got off the same place as I got with Amazon and and and, and you got the uh, two-year uh, policy with it that uh, they uh, you break it they give you a new one um, but it, it, Amazon's got these. They did last time I looked for $149 plus you pay like 16 bucks for the warranty or something like that. And they're absolutely like new. I've tested, I've tested the batteries on this. It, 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 it they're, they're terrific. It's, it's just absolutely like a brand new session five. And I've been looking for one of these things for a long time. It came with all the, came with all the, uh, all the different mounting things and the clips and, sticky stuff yep uh and it is on amazon and i'll tell you what uh i'm seriously thinking although i hate to spend more money because i spent too much on this stuff anyway but i'm thinking about just buying one more to put back because uh it uh they're so hard to find and and you know i just bought one of those run can fives which is a good camera but it costs a hundred bucks so for 50 bucks more there's nothing better than this. I mean, there's just no doubt about it. It's the stabilization, the uh, uh, the the, the uh, wide field of view that they have, the proprietary uh, thing is 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 terrific. But I'd recommend that to anybody. I haven't put any links anywhere because I'm not trying to sell these things. But you go on Amazon, the Type Hero Session Five, you'll find the deal. Uh, uh, let me let me see if I can find it here. Shop uh, Amazon my orders let's see if they still have it uh where did i buy it here it is buy it again in stock 100 ho oh, ho whoa 139 dollars now hold on a minute here guys uh i wonder if it still has the uh i still i wonder if it still has the uh Wow, hold on a minute. $139. And does it still say you can get the uh, the warranty with it? Two year protection plan, $15.99. Oh man. Oh, why am I doing this? Ah, shit. Okay, guys. I got to buy another one. I said I wanted I wanted to buy another one, but uh, for that kind of money, it, it, you're never going to find these things again after a while. And the, the camera the camera was so was so good that uh, uh, 166. I got to pay tax on it too. Uh, the uh, bingo. Okay, I bought another one, guys. You feel free to do the same. <laughs> uh, I got this one ten dollars cheaper than the last one. What a deal! It's a sickness, I know. It's a sickness, but you know, to, to to buy one of those things to put back, I'll tell you what. Anytime you want, when they're gone, you'll be able to sell that camera for one hundred and fifty bucks anyway. Uh, maybe even more on eBay. So, uh, so I wouldn't worry. But, but but that's that's that. There's my email telling me I just spent some more money. Same deal I just did. Yes, sir, Indigo. That's uh. That's the deal. That's the deal. All right. Let me let me not pay attention to you guys because it's starting to cost me money. Um, let's get back over here to the uh, to this. And oh, I gotta wet my gotta wet my little sponge. So be right back, guys. Yeah, you gotta keep that soldering tip clean. I want to wash my hands and get, you know, you get that carbon fiber dust. 
even if the carbon fiber is clean, you still get it on your hands. Okay. So, well, this has gone along at a pretty respectable pace. I haven't really run into any problems yet, but uh, uh, Sean Crowley, how you doing there, my man? Good to see you. Anybody want to come in and join me? Feel free to join me on this StreamYard thing. I put the link uh, a little further back up in the chat. I think I'll I stick it back in here again. And uh, you guys uh, want to come in, keep me company, keep the guys, help keep the troops entertained while I'm working here. Would be very nice. Okay. So I'm going to zoom in here. So you guys can see and criticize my soldering technique. All right, let's get this in the picture. All right there, there we go. So the first thing I want to do is uh, I, you know, they give you holes, and and I sometimes wonder whether to actually put these things in the holes and I wonder if this they're already pre tinned I wonder if they'll actually fit in the holes and it may be that they'll fit in the holes from the bottom up and if that's the case it might be a, a nice way to do it it is a little it is a little trickier to get them out of there if you want to take them off but uh, it doesn't appear that they really want to go in the holes. Yes, it does. Okay. So let's do that. Let's put them in from the bottom. And uh, let's see which is the... This is... Get them to lay flat here. So this would be the second one. Now, until I'm ready to solder, I'll give you guys the I'll give you guys a better a better look at what I'm doing here. Oh, you're over uh, EBR. Yeah, you're not. Uh, I think that that they got to ship to. Uh, I think you got to be in the states for that deal. That is a hell of a deal, though. When you stop to think that that Foxier Box 2 is about the same price. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm actually just going to put these things up from the bottom. Boy, these wires are just, just long enough. Holy mackerel. Which is okay as long as they reach. Yeah, look at that. Wow. Holy mackerel. I wonder if uh, if I flip them around, if I got... No, it actually is okay. So, I got them in there. May as well solder them. Okay. Let me zoom in so you guys can... I can get a close-up of the soldering. Oh, yeah, look at that. There we go. All right. I use this uh, chisel tip. I really, I really like this uh, this chisel tip for this this small work, 
and it even works it even works good on those uh, on those little 20 millimeter stack boards and it all flowed through real nice to the bottom and uh, let me get it in the picture there where you can see the can you see the, uh, there it is, you can see the solder joints? That's pretty neat there. It's pretty good. Okay, so we're going to do that on all the other ones now. And we'll pretty up the wires and heat shrink the heat shrink down. But that that's pretty nice. That keeps the wires pretty much out of the way there. And... Uh, So we'll do that and then that is the front, that is the back. <laughs> okay. So let's see which what we got here. We got uh I'll try to keep the wires the wires flat coming out the same way there. They're going in. So uh, this one reaches. That's a little longer. That's all right. So we'll do it this way. We'll put this one. one's a little long and all right think on this I'm going to use a little heavier a little heavier solder Okay, so that's that side. Ah.
Okay, looking good. Yeah, there's very little soldering to do on this on this build. Very little at all. Let's see which is the longest one. This one is the longest one. Now, you know, there's a 50-50 shot that these motors are going to run in the in the right direction. And of course, the the way you change motor direction is you have two choices. You uh, reverse any two of the three wires or you uh, go into VL Heli Suite and uh, reverse them there, which is the easiest way. But we'll get them soldered in and then we'll put the flight controller on and we will, before we do anything else, fire up the motors, see if they run. Okay, so let's solder this in here. Okay, I'll worry about neat, neatening all these up later. But for right now, we got wires and motors. And now, oh, you know what? There are different length standoffs. Now I see them. That's cool. <laughs> Go figure. So, why uh, there are shorter and longer ones, it appears. That's weird. I don't want my stack, I don't want my stack leaning. So let's get the, uh, let's get the shorter ones on the bottom. You know what, it might not be that the stack, it might not be that that was shorter. It may be that I, that I don't have that, uh, I don't have that uh, nut that's captured in all the way, and it's not, it's it's causing that that stack to be higher. That's what it was. Okay, uh, cheap nuts, but I got it all all the way in that way, and this one is the same way. So let's see if we can if if we can actually keep the. The nut from stripping out. I think, you know what? It, it's it still looks like that. Let me check to see if we do indeed have two different size. This one is uh, six point two. Uh, same size. Yeah, they're all the same size. It just looked, just was leaning. And it was because of those two, I think those two uh, nuts that, the blind nuts weren't all the way pulled down flat with the plate. So let's see. back down ah oh, yeah now it looks good okay so next thing we got to do is we got to solder on this uh, XT60 lead And the capacitor is already, already soldered on. Hey, Artco, how you doing, my friend? Good to see you. 
Hey, Art, uh, come on in, man. Somebody come in here, will you? Keep me company, for God's sakes. I got uh, the link is in the chat. I'll put it in again here. I've been doing this for an hour and a half by myself. I mean, I'm happy with my own company, but uh, oh, there he is. He's here. Okay, cool. There you are. Yeah. Oh, hey, Art. How you doing, my friend? I'm doing good. I just finished up my live stream. Oh well, I'm sorry I missed it. I mean, <laughs> I, I was I was live myself. At any mm -hmm. rate, uh, help me out. Keep an eye, keep an eye on the chat for me, and uh, uh, you can, if you don't mind, be my be my co-host here. Okay. Let's see. How do I ch change this to from private chat to? Uh, I just uh, hit co comments at the top where it says comments. Comments. I don't see comments on the right way over on the right hand side. Right hand side. I just see private chat and that's it. That's all you have. It doesn't say brand banners and comments. Maybe you don't nope. have. Well, you know what? You know what? What I do is I just open up a browser window with it with the actual uh, show running. Yeah. And, okay. And, uh, all right. I got that pop the chat out of that just make sure you don't have the audio going on that because we'll get yeah that, that. i've already got shut off i'm i'm at live chat and uh hello indigo rhino and uh ebrf pv mr crowley uh ebrf pv Tried to order that gopro at amazon don't yeah we're all spending money in here today art that uh amazon's got a a hell of a deal on on a, on that session a, a refurb hero session five which are without a doubt the best cameras to put on an fpv drone no, right no, no doubt and uh they got them today for 139 dollars oh. so um hmm. i mean these were 300 and some dollar cameras when they were new. right right well i i get mine from uh propertyroom.com i usually get uh the hero three or hero four if i'm lucky if i get one cheap enough well they got the they got the hero fives uh, with yeah the two, with it with the two-year warranty oh cool uh the, the two-year warranty is like 16 dollars. so uh yeah it's tremendous all right i just soldered i just soldered on the red wire and okay. now we're gonna put the black wire in here. Oh, watch out! It looks both. Ah. <laughs> Remember that every time they, uh, uh, you know, try to disarm a bomb. Don't cut. Oh yeah, bridge. well. Yeah. No, oh, if, this, yeah. If, if this thing blows up, <laughs> now when you solder them, one thing, when you solder these big wires onto the ground pad, right the ground keep the ground pad on these boards goes everywhere and it soaks up heat so you really really have to leave that heat on there until you see that solder yeah. flowing on that pad or else you're mm -hmm. not going to get a good joint and it's it, it's almost seems like it would be too much mm -hmm. but uh i think i got it there i used to uh make guitar effects pedals so i, I i've done my share of soldering okay so we've got the battery lead soldered on. We've got the ESC, all the ESC wires soldered on. Right. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, screw down the uh, some standoffs on the um, mm -hmm. so I can put the flight controller board in. There you go. And then we're going to put the flight controller board on, and then we're going to apply some power to it and see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so we got those and don't need these don't need to be too tight. Right. All I, right. I've got a question now. Uh I, I assume this comes with the GPS on it too as well. Yeah, this this particular kit does come with the GPS module. Oh, it's cool. uh, yeah, I, and uh what we what we got here is uh I need the little wire that goes from the uh this is a little wire that goes right from the uh ESC, right? And I imagine it can go in either way. So we'll put it in this way, mm -hmm. like this. And then we take the flight controller 
and the front of the flight controller is there's a little arrow on it right there it goes this way so this goes in to here right and then to get that wire out of the way i tuck it back like that you see what i'm doing yeah mm -hmm. and then fold it oh, nice. on itself like this oh. and that's a little trick that keeps the wire from sticking out the side so what I you end up with is ah cool is that see it right yeah now i, okay. I was w wondering i i've got an old buds three i was wondering if i could take the guts out and just putting one of those boards in they seem like they're smaller than the the boards that the buds three has then i could uh modify that so it'll have gps and all that jazz. uh i don't i don't i i it would it, it I don't think, I think you'd be better off. It'd, it'd be, it'd, it'd be a lot less grief and money. I'm not familiar with a bugs three, so I don't know what it is or what it's supposed to be, but I think that you really would be better off just building an FPV drone if you want yeah. one, but to try to put a, a GPS module in the bugs three might be, uh, might be a little bit of a, well, I was going to just take out the, the, the main board and then just leave the, the leads for the motor. And then just put the, a new board, the, the ES, whatever, you know, the controller board and the uh, CPU board and, and, and use the existing uh, battery if I'm able to use the existing battery. <laughs> it uses one of those great big long batteries. Well, like I say, I'm not familiar. I don't know uh what a bugs three is so uh okay I'm not, I'm not familiar i can't i couldn't i couldn't tell you but i can tell you that uh we're about ready there you go. To just apply power to this and see see what happens but i'll tell you what i think before i actually apply power to it what i'm going to do is is uh i'm going to um bring it over here and uh I'm going to bring it over here and I'm going to go over to, to this screen right here. Right. And I got beta flight, uh, right there. Uh -huh. And, um, I'm going to take a, uh, in fact, let me go ahead and, uh, yeah. I don't see what I get myself in the bottom here. I have a wire. Okay. <laughs> I'm behind the Mitch old guy sign. That's great. Yep. Uh, and I'm going to quick, just plug it in to this thing here and see what happens. It's blinking. Okay. Make okay. sure it's your that's, thing. That's sure good. Nearby. It's blinking. So now, I mean, if it is blinking, it's powered up. The flight controller there's nothing hooked to the flight controller but let me try to connect to it and i am connected to it and as i move the oh this is just too good as i move the drone around so does the uh oh cool screen. that oh, shows awesome. that shows me that the, the the gyro is working the accelerometer is working how cool mm. is how cool is that oh man <laughs> so mm. that uh that uh is a good sign and it does connect with beta flight i don't have anything else hooked to it yet and i haven't tried to run the motors yet but what i'm going to do while i have it hooked to beta flight here is i'm going to i'm going to take this thing called a smoke stopper okay. and the reason it's a, it's called a smoke stopper is because what it does is is it puts a light bulb in the positive in the positive uh, current route, so oh, okay. that if if there's a short circuit in the in the quad, and I'll, I'll give you an example. I'll show you what a short circuit would be like. This is the battery that this is what's going to plug into the uh, as if it was coming from the battery into the quad. Okay, right. And if uh, if there was a dead short there. 
this bulb would light and the current would be used up by the bulb and the voltage would drop and it would not blow out the, uh, uh. the so if I take a pliers and short it, see the light lights. Oh, okay. And that's what would happen if there was a short circuit somewhere in the wiring. Now I haven't wired anything yet. I, I wired up the, the, the motors. Okay. So right. I'm going to plug this in and if the light bulb doesn't light, we're in business. Uh, yeah. hear, the, hear the beeps? Yeah, I sure did. Okay, so we're good. So now that I got power to this thing, uh, mm -hmm. I'm going to go back to uh, I'm going to go back here to my beta flight, right? And I'm going to go to the motors tab, right? right? And I'm going to tell it that I understand the risks of running a a quad in the house <laughs> and then I'm going to hit the master and see if the motors spit and they do oh uh, yeah I hear that hear it yep. yep now what happens because I got this light bulb uh, in the circuit as soon as they start drawing any kind of current whatsoever uh, above just an idle it uh, um, lights up it, it, it no it, yeah it, it actually lights up and limits the current so it, it's uh, actually almost if you had props on it it would almost keep it from killing you okay so now the first thing i want to do is make sure that the motors are turning in the right direction uh, yeah. okay so uh i can't really show you this i'm trying to think how i can how i could show you this what camera i might have that i could show you this uh, at any rate, you might have to take my word for it. I'm yeah. going to, I'm going to, uh, touch the motors and see which way. Okay. So the front left motor is turning clockwise, which is correct. Mm -hmm. The front right motor is also turning clockwise, which is wrong. Okay. Uh. So that's motor three motor. So motor. Motor one Hello RDFBV. Welcome to the show. Hey uh, Mitch, I'm gonna have to get out of here. I gotta go pick up my grocery. Oh, okay. All right. Well, was, thanks for helping me out for a few minutes. I appreciate it. All right. Well, uh, uh good luck on your build. Okay. Thanks, buddy. Have a good one. All right. Bye-bye. See you later. Okay. It's just you and me, guys. <laughs> Who else is new? I've got these little, I've got these motors running and some of them are running backwards and some of them are running right. So now we have to figure out which one is which. And I, 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 I can't really show you, but I'm going to, I'm going to get them running slow. And uh, motor one is running God, sometimes it's hard to hard to see which way they're hard to feel which way they're running. Motor one is running correct. Motor two is running correct. Motor three is running backwards. And motor four is running correct. So I need to reverse motor three. So we're going to get out of, we're going to get out of, uh, we're going to get out of this, we're going to get out of, out of uh, beta flight. We're going to go into BL Heli suite. We're going to, uh, we should be on uh, COM8. We're going to connect. Connection and COM8 failed. Let me unplug the, uh, from the computer plug it in again and uh, try to connect. Why is it? Let me try something else here. Ah, uh, uh, this never fails. I got so many different versions of BL Heli Suite here. 
that uh, there we go. Let's try this one. Uh, doesn't like that. Where's the COM port? COM eight. Please connect ESC and power up. Okay, let's disconnect it. Is this even the right version of BL Heli to work with this thing? I don't think so. There's so many different kinds of ESCs, and I don't think this, I don't know if this is really, is really the latest, but uh, is, this is wanting something. So let's try a different version of BL Heli here. In fact, let me try just for grins. Let me try the uh, the Google browser base, the old the old standby. So let's because this may or may not be BL Heli 32. Uh, you run all your quads with reverse mute. Yeah, you know I I set one up that way with props out, and I couldn't tell the difference. So I think I'm just going to stick the standard stick to the standard uh let me find the software here that i'm looking for and uh, launch the app and there we go so let's start all over again let's do this and plug this in and connect That's what I was afraid of. Oh, read setup. There we go. Okay. So, what did I say? Which motor did I say I had to reverse? Was it motor three? I think it was motor three. Uh, I think it was motor three. So, let's reverse the direction on motor three. It was one, two, three, four. Okay, so I'm reversing the direction on motor three. I'm going to write the setup to the quad and I wanna disconnect and I'm gonna go back into beta flight and I'm gonna connect. I need to re plug it into the serial port and connect I need to go to the motors tab and then I need to spin up the motors and let's check the directions again so this one is spinning that way This one is spinning. This one is correct. And this one is correct. Okay. My motors are all spinning correct now. So we're, we got past that step. We, uh, at this point, um, I'm going to, uh, I need to probably could stop the motors would be nice from within here and disconnect from from here, uh, oh, well, I got it here. Let's just take a look and see uh, see what we got here. We got uh, what the ports are. Okay, it's got all kinds of UARTs available and uh, the uh, receiver is set on UART 2, but none of the other stuff, the GPS or the smart audio is, is oh the, yeah, the GPS is set up here on, uh, on UART 1, but I don't see the smart audio. So we're gonna have to go back and and do some with that. The configuration is D-Shot 600. Uh, I'm going to idle up the, the motor to probably four. And uh, it does have a barometer uh, in it. Accelerometer, 8K2K. Not going to worry about that. Craft name. Let's call it a TYRO129. And 
it's the, the receiver is are set right. It's set to 180 degree arm angle, which is good. What that does is if you have that set less than 180 degrees, if you try to arm the quad, it won't let you. And that's not good if you're flipped over somewhere <laughs> and you, you want to try to use a uh, turtle mode to flip it back. Uh, Oh, look at this. The board and sensor alignment is, says is, 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 is it's uh, 270 degrees. Well, evidently there's some set, there's something on that board that it, it doesn't point to the front, but that's fine with me. It's set up and it appears to know where the front is. That's all I care about. Uh, we don't worry about that. The GPS is set up for you blocks. It's already turned on got telemetry turned on, although I haven't put a, a, a receiver in it yet. Uh, air mode, I like air mode off. I like to turn air mode on uh, in uh, by the switch with the uh, uh, mode switch. When when you go into acro mode, I like to turn air mode on. I don't want air mode on in, in, in uh, angle mode. OSD is on, anti-gravity dynamic filter, that's correct. It's got the, the, the beeper, D-shot beeper means that the motors will beep and everything, everything beeps. Uh, okay, I'm going to save those settings. This is just stuff that I can get, you know, take a look at and get out of the way at, at, at this particular stage of the build. Uh, it is set up right because that is the front, that is the back. And that is left and that is right and that is yaw. So it is, it is set. Uh, everything's facing the right way. Um, the uh, Betaflight version on this is 4.0.3, so so this ought to have uh, in the fail safe. It does. It gives you the option for GPS rescue, and all the settings are now in here where you used to have to do them in the command line interface. Okay, so uh, we are going to use GPS rescue. After the time being, I'll leave it set to drop. And uh, let's see what else we got here. Modes. Oh, that's got a lot of that stuff already set up. It's using AUX3 for the out change, all this around angle mode. Uh, I don't even, I don't know. I don't want to switch for fail safe. GPS rescue, I want beeper, I want. Um, oh, look at all this. Okay. I'll, I'll set that up later. Uh, Here's the GPS. Of course, there's no module, so we're not going to see anything. We did the motors, the on-screen display, your basic. Nothing there yet. Uh, it does have three. Uh, it's nice because you can set up three different uh, profiles. Uh, and uh, you can turn different things on. So if you want a cluttered up screen full of information, you click a switch on the radio. If you want an empty screen with nothing, you can click it, a switch another way. Uh, Black box. It does have a black box uh, SD card on it. This cheap little, this li cheap little quad and the CLI. Okay, so so far so good, guys. Um, I'm gonna unplug the battery from it and uh, going to uh, unplug the uh, computer. And bring it back over, over here. And there it is so far. So, so far, all of the, the motors are running in the right direction. And uh, I don't need my, well, I might need my smoke stopper again because when I start wiring some of this other stuff, but we don't have any shorts now. It's got the, uh, it's got the, uh, ESC and flight controller on there. The motors are on. The pigtail is on. Um, I think what I want to do right now is I think I'm going to take you with me out to the workshop. You won't be able to see anything, but you'll uh, you'll be able to hear me. I'll be able to talk to you. And I'm just going to heat shrink down uh, that that stuff and neaten those wires up before I start installing receivers and other things. So uh, go to take uh, we'll, we'll take a five minute break here. Uh, and, uh, uh, I will, uh, let me see if I give you something 
give you something pretty to watch while I'm while I'm gone. Uh, okay, let's see here. Uh, give you some pretty pretty camera drone footage here. There you go, guys. I will be back. You'll be able to hear me talking, but and you'll be able to hear the heat gun running. But I'm going to run out to the workshop and uh, and do that. So talk in the chat, and I'll be right back in. And as usual, it's raining. It's raining out here. Nice and cool though. Very nice. Okay. I don't have any cameras out here in the workshop, but. This is where the heat gun is. Okay. I'm going to try to make these wires as neat as I can. I think I need to, I ought to put a, one tie wrap down at the base before I do the heat shrink to hold everything in place. So that's what I'm doing. Put the tie wrap on. Hope this stuff shrinks <laughs> it's pretty big i hope it shrinks down small enough god knows what kind of awful noise this motor's making in this wireless mic Looks like it's going to shrink enough, but it's pushing it, pushing the limits. All right. I don't know if you guys can hear the rain through the microphone or not, but it is raining. Drink the second one now. Two down, two to go. Usually when you see these, uh, these guys on YouTube do build videos, they, they just photograph them. They don't, most of them don't do them live. 
So uh, they cut out all the, and speed up all the parts that are tedious like this, but unfortunately I can't bend, I can't bend time. So we're stuck with it. Last one. Okay. All right, guys. Let's see what's going on here. I don't think we got anybody new. Mad Kiwi, how you doing? EBR still here in to go right at the tank. How you doing? Good to see you. And uh, I'm back. And what I did was uh, trunk the heat shrink down and uh, put, put a little tie wrap down there. So we're going to go back over here and uh, trim these, tighten up these tie wraps. And then we get ready to start it putting stuff in it because we got the basics which is pretty good so there we go got the basics of a of a seven inch quad here in two hours <laughs> which is probably more than I thought I thought I'd get done by this time and uh Let's go out a little bit here. So we have to start hooking stuff up. So let's go with the camera. And the camera's got a five pin connector on it. That's only got three wires. That's all. Now the, the camera is only going to use three wires and the camera connector is going to be on the front here. And it's not that you got to guess which, which connectors go to where I think this one's got uh I think now it's time to maybe look at the look at the board at the instruction and see which one of these things on the board is which. And you think they give you a good clear indication? Not even close. So I'm gonna have to probably so here we go. There's there's buzzer. Uh this connector over here is uh, TX1, RX1. That was where the uh, GPS was hooked to. This one over here is uh, VTX. Okay, so the VTX 
has four wires to it. And that's not it. But that's got two. Yeah, this is. Uh, so here you go. This is the VTX cable. So what did they do? They didn't put the smart audio pin in the VTX cable. So uh, let me make sure that this is right here. This is this goes in this way. There's only three wires in here. And the three wires are video, 7 to 24 volt, and ground. But the one on the end, the, the one that says data, is not in there. So I do need, I am going to need to, um, if I want smart audio, if I want to be able to con to change the, I'm going to need to uh, do something about that, that cable. But that cable goes there, and that is in, in here. So that's the VTX. So that, that goes there. All right, so that's, that's that. The camera is probably... Got to be this one. short one here it's got to go in to be the camera i say the instructions on this i do remember watching uh whoever it was that i got the idea for this thing from did a build video on it mentioned that they left the v they left that uh, smart audio cable out of the vtx but this is according to it Power ground video, and that uh, that's correct. And that and then this one is a four pin wide thing that fits into here. So that's and the fact that it's facing forward and short wire means that that's where the camera goes. This is the receiver right here. This is the receiver, and the receiver. There's this, there's S bus goes, goes in here, but, uh, I'm going to have telemetry from my receiver. So I'll probably be adding it, but that's where the receiver goes. So to start, we'll start with that. And then there's a, uh, a little tiny solder pad right here that you have to bridge. Um, I'll show you. I'll show you what that is here in a second. There's a a tiny little. Uh, where are we? Here we are. Right here, next to this plug. And there's three. There's three little pads right there. See them? And you have to bridge these two with solder for it to be S-Bus, which is what the free skies are. So let me get this out of the way. And let's go in here. and With some very, very thin solder. Put it up here where you can see what I'm doing, if I can find it again. There they are. I'll put it right in the center. And I'm going to bridge these two right here. Man, Kiwi says snow, snow. Is it snowing down where you are, man? <laughs> AEBR, see you later. Thanks for stopping by, my friend. Thanks for, thanks for hanging around for a little while. I'm going to... Uh, try to bridge this without getting it all over everything else. All 
Okay. So that could be bridged or it might not be bridged. It's very, very hard to, to see. So what I want to do is I want to get I want to get a jeweler's loop out here and uh, look at it under under a jeweler's loop and see if I can see it. And it is the two pads are covered with solder, but they're not bridged together. So I guess I need more solder on it to bridge them together. It's tricky to, to bridge two of them and not all three of them. Wow. I got, still don't have them bridged. <laughs> okay. You can barely see them without the magnifying glass. Get it that time, maybe. Nope. Wow. That's tough. Let me get some alcohol and clean all that flux off of there so I can see, see a little better. I had the same problem the last time I did this. Is I, I, no matter what I did, I could not get the uh, the solder to jump across those two things. And you know, it's possible that I could uh, have to solder a small wire jumper between the two of them. But you should be able to bridge those two. They're, they're microscopically close together. But let's uh, let's take some uh, take some alcohol here and. Uh, Q-tip and clean, clean some of the flux off of that. I don't know if, I mean, it's, it is, it is so it is so small. If you see how small this is, where you have to bridge these things, um, by looking at them here, it's right here. Right here, you can see there's one, two, three. But to give you an idea of how small those things are, this is a uh, this is the, the little the socket wrench that I'm using to tighten those little screws covers all three of them. <laughs> so what I gotta do is I gotta try again to to somehow get the, the first two to bridge together without bridging the third one. And I'm going to try to put the chisel down right between them and put a glob of solder on there. Oh, I think I may have gotten it that time. Let's see. Yes. I did it. Okay. So that
should give me my my receiver working. So now what I want to do is I want to put my GPS module on. How are we doing? We got five people in here. Who we got? Mad Kiwi, Indigo, Rhino, EBR. I guess he's gone. Uh, the tank. I don't know if you're still around. Anybody want to come in here and keep me company? I, 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 I know this is in a lot of cases like watching paint dry, but uh, uh, I'm learning stuff. So I don't know. Maybe somebody else going to learn something. Uh, maybe if, if nothing else, learn what not to do. <laughs> All right. So. Uh, I, I've learned that I need to find a uh, another. I have to get another wire somehow, and fabricate pins on it for that little thing in order for the smart audio to work, or hard wire something. Uh, I I have uh, the uh, where the receiver the receiver wire goes here. I'm going to plug all this up. Receiver wire goes there. Got the camera plugged in. Take off the lens cap. Got the VTX. And in order to make the VTX work, we do not ever power it up without a uh, an antenna on it. So we're going to Sorry, guys. I let me give you a, let me get back out to a, something that means meaningful. There we go. So what I'm doing here is uh, getting a little pigtail. And the pigtail, I think temporarily, I'm just going to set the VTX on top here to support it. There we go top of the stack which is fine I can leave it there and uh, then we're gonna put the connector the antenna snap that in come on there it goes and I'm gonna put the antenna on here so that I can fire this thing up There we go. So we got a VTX antenna. We have a plug for the receiver. We have uh, a camera. And that's all plugged in there. And we have a GPS module, which I don't have to put on till the end, but I want to see, make sure that it lights up. So we got a is this indeed the wire for the GPS? I guess it is. That goes in there. And which plug does the GPS go into? Well, there's only one left. And I have no idea what this other one here is for. Is that for the, a buzzer? That's a buzzer. Okay. I don't have the, but there is a plug for a buzzer there too. How about that? And then this is going to be the GPS. I think this is the GPS over here. Let me uh, remove this and read what it says on the board because it did it did say I think the GPS goes into UR1 and that is UR1. So the GPS module goes into this plug here. Into UR1. Okay. So we got GPS we got the VTX on top. You got to know a lot of acronyms for this. All right, let's put a couple nuts on there just to make sure this doesn't fall off. And then what I'm going to do, just for fun, is I'm going to plug this puppy in. <laughs> Uh, with all this shit hanging everywhere, I'm going to plug it in. 
Got no receiver yet, but I do have a VTX antenna. Okay. Uh, I'm going to get rid of all these. Well, no, put all these screws over here. Okay. So now I get my smoke stopper and a battery. So I'm going to get the, still going to use the smoke stopper here until I'm confident with this thing. So there we got a battery and, uh, we got a camera and I'm going to get my little, gonna get my little monitor here. This little monitor right here. I'm going to set it down and tilt this up a little bit so that you guys can see what, if, if the actual quad broadcast something. So let's turn this puppy on. Oh, cool. Okay, you can see that. And right now it's got nothing but noise. Uh, and then I'm going to power up the quad. And I got a light on my VTX. I got a little blinking blue light on my GPS module that I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, it's blinking. That means it's communicating with the controller. This thing probably started to get hot. I got, uh, uh, I'm going to do an automatic channel search and see if I got a picture. Bingo. I have, look at that. How cool is that? And here I am. There's me. <laughs> oh man. Isn't that great? So the camera's working, the VTX is working, the GPS is blinking. I, I haven't set up a receiver yet, but that's the next step. And, uh, VTX isn't getting that warm. I'm sure the power is set low and I'll have to, I'll have to work out that smart, that smart audio wire for that. Uh, I'm, I'm wondering if on the other side of the VTX, if they, if they don't have, uh, um, I have to read the instructions on how the how the lights work on that, but it all works. It all works. We get uh, we get uh, what channel is this on? It says I'm on uh, A1, which is what they usually come set to. And uh, it's not a bad looking. It's not a bad image from that camera. It looks actually looks pretty damn good. It's supposed to be, I think, a 1200 TVL camera, which is, but that. Uh, that really looks pretty good. You guys, I guess you guys can see that in the monitor here. Let me move the monitor a little closer to the camera so you can see what the, what the quad is seeing, but having, having this little, uh, external, this little monitor set up really comes in handy when you're working on the workbench and you're testing this stuff out, but there's the, uh, here's your host. <laughs> Hi guys. And, uh, that's great. So, so far, so good. So let me turn this off. And uh, unplug the power from it. Okay. So now, let's take stock. All right. Let's say hi to everybody. See who's here. Yeah, Indigo, that little that little thing, uh, if it passes a continuity, do you still need a smoke stopper? Uh, you know what? Not really. You don't really need it. But on the other hand, uh, when I used the smoke stopper the last time, I didn't have the VTX plugged in. I didn't have the camera plugged in. And I didn't have the GPS plugged in. And it's possible that there could be a short in, in, in one of those little units that uh, could then make it go smoke. So uh, the only time I actually would use the smoke stopper is, well, there's two reasons I might. It, it, it's a, 
if you ever do plug your quad in in the house with the props on, that smoke stopper will keep you from killing yourself because what happens is as soon as if the motors decide they want to wind up with the props, as soon as they start drawing any amount of current, that light bulb will suck it all up and bring the voltage down to where the thing will fail safe and shut itself off. Uh, uh, I, I learned that from Joshua Bardwell uh, watching one of his videos about smoke stoppers. But uh, uh, from here on out, I probably won't use it unless I put some other piece of gear on it that, that draws power and might potentially have a short circuit. It's better safe than sorry with that thing. Um, I think that uh, uh, it's coming along pretty good for, we started uh, even with all the talking and everything started two and a half hours ago and um, actually have, have something that resembles a quad. So what I want to do right now is I want to mount the camera, get the uh, posts in, mount the, 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 the uh, VTX antenna on the back. So I'll take that off off of here and I got four posts here and some antenna mount stuff. So I got four posts and two of these posts are going to go into this TPU gizmo that to mount the antenna and that would go in here, but on, but as usual, when they do these things, they make them thick, and then you don't have enough of this thread sticking out on the other side, where you can actually screw the antenna down because then the antenna hits the uh, hits the base before it gets tight. So you don't even need you don't even need the screws there because you with with, with you wouldn't be able to tighten this tight enough. I don't know if you know what I'm saying, but if if I put that screw on there, then the antenna would tighten and it would still be loose because it wouldn't have gone down far enough. I had that same problem with a couple other quads. So because it's TPU, I'm just going to put the antenna uh, right in there, and then this uh, will go. Um, into this hole right here. I think that's gonna that's gonna do it. So let's that's where the post goes, I think. And that's I think gonna leave me room to uh, to mount the GPS stuff on on the back. So if I put that in there, like that and get another get another one of these posts on this side should have put that in first before I screwed it down but I'll do this I'll take this There we go. Just like this. This goes down on there. And I think the top plate I think that that I think that's okay. And I think the top plate will will go right on there just fine. So let me tighten these down. 
posts and then the camera mounts. So we got these two plates right here. And these plates, which way do they go? Well, let's see. Do they go? The camera has to tilt up. So goes this way. That goes that way. This goes this way, I think. Uh, I might look at the picture here just to uh, just to see if that doesn't look right. Of course, the picture doesn't look anything like that, but yes, it does. It, it is it is tilted. So the so the camera does tilt up, and then. We need two more of these posts. This really is a uh, pretty straightforward kit to build if you've had a if you have a a build video to watch because they really leave a lot of if somebody had never built a quad before. Fortunately, this is my third one of these Tyro series quads that I've built. And uh, if I hadn't have built the other two, I would have been scratching my my head a hell of a lot more than, than I did building this thing. So now the camera uses these screws here. And these are little Phillips head screws. So let's, uh, let's dig out a Phillips screwdriver. And mount that camera in here. Just now, does it? Yeah, okay. So let's uh, get that top plate on. There we go. And I will probably end up loctiting these when I'm all done. But for right now, I'm just putting them in uh, loose enough that... Uh, Or tight enough that it's just going to hold together. And then before I fly it, I'll go back and with the tie, tie wrap everything. And then another another camera screw. There we go. On this side. And let's see if we can approximate on a, on a quad like this, I would want the camera angle to be extremely low. And the reason is it's going to be a cruiser. It's not going to be a racer. So I'm thinking that, uh, I'm thinking that, uh, I, I, you know, you just want a, a small, small down tilt. And the way I've got the camera set right now is that's, that's about where it would be flying because you can always adjust these things. But I, I really think that, uh, that, that I'm going to want to, uh, not a, one of these. Deals. <laughs> so, uh, I think that, uh, that I'm going to, uh, just initially put it in there with a really small, small camera angle. And since they do give you the slots on the side here for uh, the, a screw to actually lock the rotation, I'm going to put them in too. So that camera is not going anywhere and you can adjust, you can loosen that. And, and they do have, I don't know if you can see it or not. Let me see if I can make, make it. Yeah, there it is. You can see that on the side there, let me get the light on it just right, that there's a, uh, I had it there. 
there's uh, slots so you can have a lock screw in there. Okay. And put the one on this side too. There it is. Am I not? I'm not into it. That's why it's not tightening. Okay. So that looks like a uh, get them both the same way here. There we go. All right, so the camera is mounted. The VTX is mounted. And I will worry about these wires later. The uh, Uh, I checked the chat. Nobody's saying much. Appreciate you guys hanging in there with me. I don't think I'm ever going to take over the internet with these videos. Not unless I get some dancing girls in here. Okay. So that... That's pretty... Uh, antenna's pretty, pretty nicely mounted on there. I like that. And I can tighten it up even more. I didn't go on anywhere. Good. And the little wire, the wire that goes from here to there is uh, a nice little, nice little bend. I need to put some, some couple of nuts I missed on the VTX here. I don't want to take that top plate off again. Uh, I could be here all day. I'll take the top plate off the camera. That's all bolted together. Shouldn't go anywhere. Let me put these... Uh, these other nuts on and tighten them down. And one more. Now, I think it might not be a bad idea to 
we'll get some tie wraps to tie wrap this this wire right to this post here so that it can't move and pop out that connector so i need to well i can they give me some tie wraps here i use their tie wraps let's take and uh Just run this. Okay. That's uh, that's good. Now, I'm going to unplug the GPS out of here. I don't need that hanging around in the way right now. And I want to get the top plate back on. Okay, now it appears that there's a lot of a camera squeezes these things together pretty good. So I need to really push on on this side here to get it out to snap back into that hole. There we go. Okay, so let's see where we are. Got six people here. Anybody new? The tank. I think that uh, not very chatty. Nobody wants to come in and talk to me. Everybody's just watching me build. So I appreciate you hanging in there with me. Here's where we are. We have uh, clean up a little bit here, <laughs> I think, and uh, take stock of what I have yet to do. Okay, that looks pretty good. The uh, plenty of room in the air for the receiver, that's for sure. And the battery strap goes down here, and I'll put some silicone down here on the bottom for that. Uh, I still need to address the mount, the way to mount the uh, the GPS antenna. This, uh, I'm sure, just uses a battery strap to hold it to the top, to this top plate here, which that's pretty good because it's not really a, a killer, a killer angle, but that probably just uh, uses a battery strap to hold the GoPro on top. And the GPS antenna is gonna have to mount back off of this, 
this area back here um, somehow to uh, get it up pretty high. So I'll probably have to make some kind of a uh, of a holder for that GPS antenna. And I think it's got a long enough wire to uh, get it up pretty high. Yeah, it does. In fact, you could probably mount it up here on top of the GoPro, but it needs to see the sky. Another place that, that a lot of people mount these things is out here on the arm. Um, and I've done that before too, is mounted out, mounted out on the arm. Um, and that might not be a bad idea on a quad this big as well. And that would, what I would do is basically get rid of one of these heat shrinks, uh, run these wires down on the side, uh, of, of that particular arm. I think, in fact, I think that's what I'm going to do rather than try to mount it up on the body. I think that, that mounting it out here on the arm, the, 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 the props don't, don't bother. It gets a lot of satellites. Uh, you take, uh, you take a, a, and heat shrink the whole mess in, uh, in a clear heat shrink. And I, I, I believe that that's going to be the answer. So that's, so I'm, I'm going to do that. And, uh, so that solves the GPS problem. What else I got left over here? I've got a few little pieces of hardware left, spare parts. Did I save any bags? Yes, I did. Take a little bag here. And, whoops, put the spare screws in it. And uh, I think that's about that. Don't need the soldering iron anymore. So I think that uh, I think that we built a quad, and that uh, the few things that I need to do to finish it up are going to be uh, are going to be pretty time consuming. And I think that. Uh, I think that it'd just be way too boring to have you guys sit through it. But let me let me recap. What I need to do is in this cable that goes from the flight controller to the uh, video transmitter, there's a wire missing that carries the uh, information for smart audio to control the channel and uh, the power settings from your OSD and transmitter sticks. And that wire is missing. Um, there's, there's a pins for it there. So what I need to do is go find some other little cable that has matching type connectors uh, that's about the right length and remove, a, remove one of the, the wires that has the right pins on it and insert them into these pins and make that, make that connection. That's not rocket science. The next thing I'm going to be doing is 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 putting a, a, a Free Sky R9MM. In fact, let me go let me go get it here uh, and show you what what receiver I'm putting in here. So I'll be right back in a second. The R9MM is uh, nine works in the 900 megahertz range and is considered a long range receiver. Uh, they they talk about the uh, if you get the right antenna and everything, they talk they they talk about enormous range with these things, far much further than we would ever. You know, they're talking 10, 15 kilometers. Um, but the nice thing about it is, it does have telemetry, and it, uh, which means you can get all that good GPS information uh, on your transmitter as well as your OSD and. Uh, I think that uh, I think that that uh, that's the way to go for this quad because I think this is going to be a, a cruising quad. So here's here's what we got here. This is uh, the uh, this is how it comes in this little this little package. I got tape on there. Be careful not to cut this stupid little antenna, stupid little wire, the antenna. There we go. Okay. <laughs> this is the receiver. See the size of that thing? 
<laughs> Look at it next to my fingertip. <laughs> and I'm going to take this receiver and I'm going, I'm going to, uh, uh, solder the, the wires to it. I'm going to take the ends, these things and probably add one more for telemetry. So I'll remake this cable as well and then mount that in there. And then this antenna, this T antenna will, will mount under here like this and go across, across the bottom of the quad, or it'll mount out here on one of the arms and go out this way. But that's, uh, that's the, that's going to be, that's the antenna right there. And, uh, I, ideally you'd want it out further, but there, I would have to make some kind of amount for it. But I do believe that right here would be okay. Uh, It'd be below the props, so the wind would be blow, the, the breeze would be blowing them, blowing them down, which would be perfect. So that's something else I have to sit and consider a little bit. Uh, it does come with a, uh, it does come with with a, with some of these uh, little things I could solder in there and actually just plug the plug into it, which might not be a bad idea. But whenever you get a new free sky receiver, you want to flash it with the most current firmware. So I'll do that. And again, these are the little things that just take more time to uh, finalize up once you once you've got the quad built. But I think that we've uh, we pretty well got it built now. Uh, just for just for grins, let me uh, throw a propeller on it. See how big it looks. <laughs> All right, so we got got some propellers here. Let's throw some props on it and see. Let's see. Go wide, and uh, that's the top. And this is this is in this way. And this one goes this way. And this one goes this one here, turning this way. This one turns this way. They give you two, I've seen in the pictures too, they give you two clear ones and two blue ones, which I don't quite get, but it's okay. The clear ones could be either the front or the back. doesn't matter, but that goes like that. So there's the, there's the size of this thing uh, in its finished form. And uh, just, to give you, just to give you an idea how big it is, uh, there's the size of it, and here's here's a five inch quad. <laughs> so it is considerably bigger uh, than the five inch. I uh, I didn't think it'd be I didn't think it would actually look that much bigger, but it really does. And it's not any heavier. Uh, I don't think it's not much heavier. It's got most of the same stuff in it, but it's a it's a pretty uh, pretty spindly looking, you know, it doesn't look like, it doesn't look like a real meaty quad, but it, 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 uh, 100 and now it's 119, $129. You, you get all this, you get everything here, uh, for that plus the GPS module. And, uh, for, for, for most, uh, purposes, you got to figure a few things out, but, uh, the information is going to be out there, uh, you know, guys that, that have already figured it out and uh, can tell you how to, I'll be able to tell you guys, if you ever decide you want to build one of these things, how to, how to fix the little bit of wiring, but you could fly it like this. Um, uh, believe it or not, I could uh, throw the receiver in it and go out and fly it now if it wasn't raining. <laughs> so there we did it. We built, uh, we built, uh, the seven inch uh, Tyro 
129 from Banggood. I got a link down in the, the description if you guys are interested in it. And uh, I'll come back with a little video, not a live stream probably, but once I get it all, uh, everything all finished up and uh, calibrated, maybe uh, in that video, there'll be a little uh, how, how I set the rest of beta flight up, the receivers, the modes and, and all that stuff. But uh, for all intents and purposes, we got us a quad. So with that, I think the time is just about six o'clock, uh, three hours, which not bad, not bad. I thought it might run longer than three hours. Uh, and uh, with that, I'm going to uh, going to call it a day, going to crank up some music. I think. Where's my music? Do you hear any music? There we go. Been sitting so long, it shut itself off. All right, guys. I haven't even used any sound effects today. Damn. There we go. <laughs> okay. So all five of you, or four of you plus me, uh, thanks for uh, thanks for coming by. Drone pool, you still around? Thanks for coming by, guys. Whoever's left, thanks for hanging in there with this thing, and thanks to Art for coming into the chat for a couple minutes. Uh, uh, it's been fun. Got got it built, and uh, give them, I have a little project for this week to finish it off. So with that, uh, I'm going to say goodbye. And uh, you can say goodbye to, uh, to Spank like I usually do. And there you go. Uh, goodbye, Spank. And I will see you all the next time and uh, see you on the other guys' chats. So uh, have a good day, guys. Thanks for standing in there with me. Take care. <laughs>